We are in Exodus chapter number 12, verse number 1. Who does and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto the congregation of Israel, say, Israel saying, In the tenth month, uh, in the tenth month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for, ev for a house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it unto the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. They shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the house, wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire. His head and his legs and the pertinence thereof, and ye shall let nothing of it remain unto morning. And that which remaineth of it unto the morning shall be burned, uh, you shall burn with fire. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, and your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of, of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not uh, uh, be upon you to destroy you when I smite uh, the land of Egypt. Let's catch one more verse. In this day shall be unto you for a memorial, for you shall keep it, a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by the ordinance forever. Our Father, we thank you for the blood of Christ that cleanses us from all sin. And uh, we pray, God, that you would restore every heart, give us uh, a renewed confidence in you, renewed appreciation for what uh, you have done for us in saving us, and removing the guilt and the penalty of sin. Lord, I pray for your help. I pray for everyone listening that they would get, um, uh, Lord, just get excited and thankful about what you've done for us. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Now, one of the things about the, the blood of Christ, it is uh, the blood of the animal does not save you. Uh, you know, Catholicism teaches that the, uh, the wafer in communion, uh, when they take that, it turns to the literal, physical, flesh, body and blood of Christ, which is absurd. And there's one thing we want to always remember, when you're talking about symbolism or, uh, uh, or a, uh, an Old Testament analogy, or we call it a type, typology, it, it's something that illustrates the truth. And Jesus did that so much with, uh, with parables, uh, illustrated great truths through, through stories that he said, in essence, it's like that. And so this is in that general category. There had been uh, uh, nine plagues, Moses uh, who... Uh, <laughs> Moses, who felt so inadequate, who had failed miserably, 
and fled the scene, lived on the backside of the desert for 40 years. God is not in a hurry. I, I, I remember telling a, a young man one time, they, he said, uh, how long have you been at your church? And I told him, uh, 10 years in, 15 years, he said, he started laughing. He said, you should never stay at a church for more than two years. <laughs> I said, that's what's wrong with our churches. People need to be committed and they need to stay where God sent them uh, unless God moves them. God, God has a, a place and a will. I joke about God's will for people. Uh, it, it's just kind of a way of saying it's okay, it's okay, you know. God has a place for you. God has a church for you. Uh, and if you don't want to be in the best church in the state of Washington, that's not my fault. You can go somewhere else. But... Uh, I'm done. <laughs> but the, the important thing we need to see about this scripture is, is the emphasis, the emphasis that needs to be uh, understood in light of the New Testament uh, is, um, is a danger. The death angel is involved in this. Uh, John 3:16, is not appreciated or understood unless people see the danger shall not perish. And so this is, has to do with that perish. We will stand before God one day at the judgment seat. We will stand with him at the great white throne judgment. It just amazes me how Christians... <laughs> We put this out of mind like we're not going to give an account to God. Like he's not going to reveal our secrets. He will. And he's going to expose us for exactly what we are. And I'm not jumping up and down about that. So uh, we're going to stand before God one day. And the reality of our salvation. If you could go to the white throne judgment. If every Christian could, uh, if they could have a camera and look into the future and show a little video clip of the great white throne judgment when angels, we're going to judge angels, are cast in the hell, cast in the lake of fire. When the unsaved, people that you know, people that are related to you, people that, uh, the, your, your forefathers that didn't come to Christ, uh, religious people, people that have done horrendous crime, uh, uh, Adolf Hitler will be there, and all his uh, henchmen, uh, murderers, and every, every uh, uh, conceivable sinner in the world is going to be there. Right. If we could see that, and come back here. If we could feel that, I want to make you feel it a little bit. I want to feel it. Yeah. I want to experience that. And so if you could send people to the great white throne judgment and bring them back, oh, the track rack would be empty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. you, would, you would go witness to your loved ones yeah. and to your coworkers and schoolmates and friends. You would get the gospel out and your stomach would start growling. You'd be hungry. Yeah. I wouldn't go watch the game. I want to see the game. I mostly enjoy watching Joel's reaction when they lose. It's priceless. He gets so angry. And if you could, if you could see that reality that's looming out there in the future, oh boy. Every Christian would be different. You'd go to your neighbor next door. We got a new neighbor. I like her. First good neighbor I've had in years. Of course, the guys before weren't bad, but she's just a sweetheart. We gave her a track. We witnessed to her. Invited her to church. Gave her the gospel. If we could let our minds understand this, is re this illusion of surviving and getting through life, and uh, 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 me and my four and no more, you know. My little family, my little friends, my little group, my little church. If we could see what's coming, 
and experience that, I wouldn't have to get on you about witnessing. I wouldn't, I'd, I'd go, I think I'd just go witness. I think I'd witness, I was so weak, I couldn't keep going. I think, you know, I was telling these gentlemen yesterday, Michael and his brother, I was telling them, you know, they were talking about how people treat them. I said, you know, the funny thing is, when you live the way God tells us to live, and you live an evangelistic life, and you're trying to live right, if you live that way, you're bizarre. There's something, I remember we got saved. We were, uh, one guy told me, he said, I stood up for you the other day. I said, well, good. Well, I said, what was said? He said, somebody said you're a religious fanatic. I said, thank God. My little bit of witnessing, I'm a religious fanatic. We, you know what a fanatic is? It can be good or it can be bad. A fanatic is somebody who believes 100% in something. I'll take that. If there's a heaven or hell, I can't put evangelism on the back burner. So, God says, nine plagues already. God said, I'm executing this judgment against these gods. They had several gods. And every area <laughs> that their God was supposed to protect them, he failed. Every area, every plague was an assault against and a, and a revealing of these false gods that Egypt had. I mean, they really messed things up. And you know, isn't that what they said about Paul? These that have turned the world upside down have come hither also. They, they're changing stuff. So he tells him how to do it. You take a lamb. Who's that typify? The lamb of God, Jesus the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. It typifies Christ. He's got to be spotless. You know that later on, they, they got so corrupt, they would take a lamb that was lame or a lamb that had a spot or something wrong with it. They'd try to offer that because they didn't want to give up the good lambs. The symbolism of salvation is so important here because it has to do with our... <laughs> Uh, preventing us from going to judgment. You can't appreciate the love of God. Somebody said it was, what, four or five books in the Bible um, before, in the Old Testament, before the love of God is mentioned. And then in the New Testament, it's, uh, I think the first mention is in John 3, for God so loved the world. But yet you know God by his actions. Yeah. You know that God loves people. So here they are. Uh, they say, okay, we're gonna, these, are the these are not something that every little thing has a symbolism. It's practicality. They're taking up. You've got two people in the house. Your neighbor is just one of him. You get together and you, to, for the sake of not having to slay too many lambs unnecessarily. So uh, if a household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall, uh, shall make your count for the lamb. Got to be without blemish, verse 5. Of the first year from the sheep or the goat and the, four, uh, uh, the fourteenth day of the same month, it, was, it had to be to fulfill the prophecy of Christ. This symbolism had to represent Jesus in his purity. He was without fault. He never sinned. Jesus did not need salvation because he never sinned. Oh, how about that? No. How about that one time he flew off the handle? No. There's never a time, even in anger, Jesus never sinned. I'll tell you what, it'll change our life when we can see that blood applied to our doorposts. He says, Take that blood. They would slit his throat. They would take that lamb. This was not an enjoyable meal. This, this is what wasn't a meal that uh, I ate at a Korean restaurant in Yakima on Tyathan there. It was just visually beautiful, and it was delicious. And they had all these little side, six side dishes. I sent my wife a picture of it. And the, and the 
uh, pork stuff. They brought it out. It was sizzling. I thought, oh, man, this is good. And I ate it, and I ate it, and I ate it. And it was so good. And I'll take you over there one day, baby. You want to go? I'll take you. And so this was not an enjoyable meal. You got to eat in a hurry. And I naturally eat in a hurry because of the way I grew up. The, the hardest thing that I dreaded the most when me and Kathy were dating, but be sure and look at those pictures. I got pictures of her when she had teeth, uh, had all her teeth back there. She went, I didn't know that one was good looking like that. And she married me. So be sure and look at those pictures. My mom, my grandmother, kids, and beautiful me. Now, who's got those pictures? Where'd they go, baby? Right back there. So take a look at those. So uh, they, they, took that animal, and they took that blood. They would take like a hyssop or some type of plant, maybe something like sage, I don't know, and they would dip it in the blood, and they would splatter the blood on the doorpost and the lentils. That way, it symbolized everyone that went in and out of that door was saved, but they weren't to go out that door. This is, a, this is a terrifying time. We haven't had wars in this country since the Civil War. But there, there are countries that have had war that understand, I mean, war within their country. And China's about to take over uh, Taiwan. Can you imagine? Uh, their planes are flying over. They got a show of force there. We're trying to Support them, but we'll cave in. We'll, we'll give it up. There's no way we're going to... We'll, and China knows that. We're not going to fight. We, we don't have backbone anymore. So uh, this blood is applied to the d door, and they are to eat this overcooked, well done, as fast as they can, and as much as they can, with bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden, not, 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 not in water, roast with fire, his head with the legs, and the purities thereof, and you shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. You eat all you can, you eat it fast as you can. You're taking in Christ. That's what salvation is. You're receiving Christ. He said, if you don't eat my flesh, drink my blood, you have no part with me. And everybody's like, whoa, okay. The religious crowd walked away. That blood uh, and, and the death of that, uh, of that lamb typifies again Christ. And so they got to eat it. Anything left, it's burned by fire. It's speaking of judgment. Yeah. Jesus endured hell in a moment of time so that you and I can be saved. Amen. That's what people don't get today. It, there's a penalty. There's a judgment that's looming near. They were terrified. They'd already seen nine plagues. <laughs> They'd already seen this happen. God said, this one's going to do it. We're going to kill the firstborn. And they applied that blood, and there's no laughing, there's no joking, there's no rejoicing. There's absolute terror. Because a death angel is about to pass over. The death angel. You know God's got angels to do his work. God's got angels. He's got angels that cast people into hell. He's not going to do it. We're not going to do it. They're, they're defending God's honor. They're, they obey God. There's no mercy. There's no mercy without the blood. Right. None. Boy, do we need mercy. I need it. There's no mercy without the blood. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. You forget your good works. You forget who you witnessed to or how many you saved or what you did. None of that. And we all understand that. Nothing we've done will warrant forgiveness. That's good. It's good for the, for the person that feels lower than low. 
It's good for the person that maybe even questions their salvation. And the mindset of the people, I mean, looking at human nature, the mindset was when they applied the blood, they went in, shut the door, and began to eat this overcooked lamb. In the morning, they burn it up. You know, just like a Baptist church, some people doubt. I went to the altar with people, uh, especially in our home church, that they just kept doubting. They just, I didn't make a profession of salvation ever so often. I think sometimes that's the preacher's fault. Sometimes preachers, we will, we, rather than admit that people have to grow in Christ, learn from the mistakes, we say, well, he did that, he couldn't have been saved. Right. And some people aren't. A lot of people are and just can't get to victory. You're not alone. If you struggle with something in your life, you are not alone. There's more of us like you uh, that struggle with different issues. In that house, somebody said, boy, I hope that blood works. Somebody's in that house sitting around that table eating that stuff and they want to peek out. They want to make sure the blood didn't, didn't get washed away or something happened. The, the blood was everything to them. It was the only thing to them. Judgment's near. Absolute, unstoppable, total judgment is, is near. You know, people don't understand God because we don't represent him right. Churches, we don't represent him. We lose our fear of God, and the world loses their fear of God. And it's a mistake we need to not make. And we need to warn people. We need to act like there's a hell. And if you don't witness, you're telling the world that either I don't care or there's not a hell. Right. Yeah. I'm too afraid. I want you to say that to the person to great white throne judgment. Right. There will be people there cast in the hell that will look up and see you and you are their fishing bay. Huh? You, you did stuff together. You were in a club. You, 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 had, you, know, you went to school with them. You worked with them, whatever. And they were your buddies. They were your neighbors. Hey, neighbor. Hey, he's going to church. I guess I'm okay. Because if there was a hell, surely the goodness, surely the goodness said, tell me. Right. You see? Judgment is near. That death angel. I don't hear no John 3.16 here. It's there. It's there because the blood is applied. Without the shedding of blood, I'll say it again, there's no remission of sins. Somebody's in that house worried if they're going to make it in. And when we get to heaven, there'll be somebody there that'll say, Whoa, I'm glad I made it. I don't know. I couldn't be in a church that believes you can lose your salvation. I, I, I ran into a preacher. Actually, we had to share a hobby together, and I was reaching out, fellowship to him. And man, he had a horrible spirit. He believes you've got to be baptized in the name of Jesus. And I'm like, you know, if you're saved, I don't agree with your doctrine. I said, but you can still do something for God. But I said, I've been doing this a long time, and I know there's something wrong in your life. I told him that. We argued back and forth a while. I said, there is something in your life that's not right. I don't care if you are a preacher. Your spirit's messed up. I knew it. He never responded. So I think I hit the nail on the head. Death angel. That's what he does. He kills people. Who was it? Remember Balaam's donkey? Donkey started talking. There's a lot of donkeys talking today. It's another name for them, but I can't use that. I don't want to act like a jackass. Across America. But the donkey said, Stop, you're going to be killed. And sure enough, there's an angel in the way. And if he kept going and doing, pursuing what he's, there's a death. Do you, you know, I don't know if you ever heard the sermon. Where did I find that at? 
I just read, found that book the other day, and, it, and it's uh, J. Harold Smith, God's Three Deadlines. I heard him preach it. God's Three Deadlines. If you get out of fellowship with God, and the Lord knows we do, and you keep going and going and going, at some point, it'll be more long-suffering than the preacher would allow. It'll be more long-suffering than the church will allow. But at some point, if we're saved, God is going to say, that's it. One more step, I'm taking you home. Yep. You know how many people I've seen, no doubt in my mind, that God took home early because they just wouldn't do right. Wouldn't do right. There have been times in my life I'm thinking, why am I still alive? And God gives them mercy when I'm thinking, boy, he, he ought to just take John Allen home. Get it over with. This judgment is near. It's permanent. You ever did anything that was permanent? I was drafted in the Army. Boy, I wish it started to draft up again. I'd just love to see... Some young men squirm. They'll get you. I'm gonna make sure. I'm gonna make sure they get you. I'm gonna make sure they'll get you. I'm gonna write them. But I, that was sort of permanent for two years. I tried to think of a way out of it. Two years the army had me. They taught me how to march. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was in San Francisco, so that's how they... No, not really. Permanent! Death is permanent! There were some people in that house, they were doubting, and some people were just so confident. You can be confident. Quit looking at yourself and start... Preacher, I don't do what you do. I don't do what I... Are you saved? The only thing, if you ask me to come out and say, Preacher, can you help me with this thing? Can you tell me if I'm saved or not? I'll go out, I'll look on your door, and I said, looks like you are to me. Got the blood there, the doorpost and the lintel, and you're covered. Yeah. And nothing better than being covered the multitude of rich people that are ensnared in that. And they're going to die without Christ. And they told herself for years it ain't so. And they told their friends. Remember that guy in the coffee shop? I'll never forget him. We tried to witness to him. I befriended him and talked to him a little bit. Two guys and they, they were from the land of sin in Seattle. And we talked a little bit. Tim came in. We sat down. And I said, hey, I want to tell you about Jesus. He said, I ain't buying that car. <laughs> kind of funny how he handled it. He got, I ain't buying that car. And that was his way of yeah. mocking and joking his way out of it. Mm -hmm. That guy's going to be there if he doesn't get saved. Yeah. He's going to be looking around confused and terrified. And, how can this be true? Yeah. How come I didn't know? Because you kept telling yourself and you surrounded yourself with unbelievers that reinforced it. You can't go through life knowing there's a hell and ignoring it and not get saved. You've got to tell yourself it's not so. Not so. Oh, I'm up this window. Mm -hmm. No, they can make noise. I'm going to be louder. i got to get Emily saved. <laughs> I wish I'd have thought of that earlier. <laughs> the blood! The blood has been applied to the doorposts and the lentils, and that's all God's looking at. It's the blood! Nothing but the blood! Death angel. He ain't there to save people. He's not there to save people. He's there to kill people. Blood is a mark or a signature from God that's saying, don't kill these. Don't kill the people in this house.
is permanent. Hell is permanent. No resurrection. For these kids that die, these young firstborn that die, there's no resurrection. But it has to do, there is a resurrection of the unjust and a resurrection of the just. That blood means safety. You know, it's possible. Paul said, I'm going to be a castaway. Somebody said, oh, that means he's lost. No, he doesn't. Paul never implied that he thought he could lose his salvation. A castaway, literally, is someone who's put on the shelf that God cannot use anymore. They're, they're uh, an ornament. I fear that more than anything. Get to the place where God can't use us. It's a place of safety. It's a place of deliverance. It's deliverance. <laughs> this blood is on your house as a token. When I see the blood, verse 13, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. There's safety. There's deliverance. They're about to go on a journey. Christianity is a journey. It's an adventure. Look at me. What in the world am I doing in Ellensburg, Washington? I'm from North Kakalaki. <laughs> but God in his love and mercy for you people and Mary Beth sent me here so you could hear the most amazing Never mind. <laughs> the blood's on the doorpost in the lintel. That's all that matters. But, but maybe I didn't put enough on, or maybe I didn't do it at the right time, or maybe if I'd have read my Bible more, or something, I, there seemed like there's something. No, it's a helpless feeling. You can't do it. You can't do it. But God can They're about to leave. They're about to leave what? What's the number one thing you think about Egypt? I think about slavery. They're slaves. Everything about them is controlled. Sounds like our government now. I'm glad people are standing up for what they believe. When I see the blood. You know, that doesn't stop. That's a starting point. 1976, the blood was applied to my heart's door. 1976. It started an adventure. Something that I still feel ill-equipped to do. But it started an adventure where I, my whole life, I learned these songs in the songbook. I didn't know these songs, any songbook. I heard Rock of Ages, maybe. Maybe a few verses of Amazing Grace. I never heard this. I, I watch people when they come to church, tell me been to church before. If they haven't been, they'll be, they don't know the words, they don't know the tune. I had to learn all that. I am a child, of, I'm a certified child of God. I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. And you don't deserve it. We, we don't have to be cast into hell. We don't have to be cast into the lake of fire. Forever and ever and ever. Can you imagine the whole process of that the next morning? They begin to venture out. You think they didn't look at that blood? You think they didn't go out of the house and look at the doorposts of the littles and say, wow, it worked. Have you ever said that about salvation? I, when I got saved, one thing I told myself, the main thing, because I tried to change, I couldn't do it. Um, I remember thinking, if this lasts one month, 
I don't know what's real. I'm weak. I got an addictive personality. You know? I got a song stuck in my head right now that I cannot get out. And I still ain't got the tune of it. It's my jelly roll. Somebody save me. Somebody save me. Me from myself. Hey, that ain't bad. I almost got it. And it's not a Christian song, but it should be. I said it at last a month. You know what I did? You know what the first thing happened to me? I went to work. I said, started telling, I mean, I cussed every other word. Now it's every fourth word. But bad, worse than anybody. Worse than anybody. Normal cussers got on me. A lot of anger is here. I remember getting saved. I had hair down here. Back then, it was a little different than it is now. Matter of fact, I got a guy coming to speak whose hair is down here. And he's a big old boy, but he's a counselor. He's going to preach on, on uh, or teach, not a preacher, he's going to teach on uh, uh, depression. I heard him in Sunday school. I said, You got to come over and do that for us. God set me free. And I went to I went to work and I said, said to myself, who's the best Christian here? Jesse Bradford, lady, mountain lady from North Carolina. She, her whole family moved down here from the mountains of North Carolina, moved down in Salisbury area, Rowan County. I said, Jesse, I just got saved. She started crying and screaming and shouting. I'm like, I must have got saved <laughs> by her reaction. It means something. And I went to that church, Mary Kathy. I said, where do you go to church? She said, Morning Star. I said, I've never been in a Baptist church, but I'm going to go. My head, my neck hurt. I was watching them. One would stand, the pastor's wife stood over here, just tears flowing. Thank you, God, for salvation. And somebody over here was just laughing and joyful and happy. And people, praise God. And there were so many people our age that had just gotten saved there. And their testimonies were amazing. And I'm like, my wife said, we ain't coming back. I said, yes, we <laughs> I saw things I'd never seen in my life. I heard things I'd never heard in my life. Wish y'all could get into some of that praise. Just a little bit. Praise God. Something. <laughs> And I thought to myself, it ain't been quite a month, but I've changed. I want to go to church. It was natural. It was natural. I wanted to look like those people, act like those people, tithe like those people, sing like those people, and I ended up out shouting them all. It was a shout. I said, Hallelujah! I don't do that now because I don't want to frighten you. If the blood has been applied to your life, make something of it. Talk about it. Enjoy and appreciate it. There's nothing else in life more important than the blood. You got the blood, you can safely move to Arizona or Goldendale. But without it, one of those snakes is going to bite you. Or the earth is going to open up and swallow the Arizona people. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for the blood of Christ that cleanses us, gives us eternal life. We're washed in the blood of the Lamb. We're pure and white in that robe of forgiveness. We pray for anyone, Lord, watching here uh, this service, Lord, that come to Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.